And finally for today, um, gummy clips. Another demo and that with another disclaimer that you must get these tested. Dummy clips are not something that you can test at home. Um, the testing for them, which is EN12586, uh, requires various clasps and um, open and closing mechanisms that have to be done in a lab. If you've not got a safety lab at home, like most of us don't, the only way that you your insurance will be valid is if you have your dummy clips independently tested. They are more expensive than your Tevas, um, but there's, there's absolutely no negotiation. You have to have them done. Um, and I can't emphasize this enough. There's so many non-compliant dummy clips on the market. It's just terrifying. And just because you see others and you think that doesn't look compliant, and it probably isn't, um, it, it doesn't mean that you can just safely say, I don't need my testing. So firstly, dummy clip, you must use um, 1.5 mil width cord as a minimum. I use two. Your dummy clips cannot be longer than 22 centimeters from the base of the clip, which is here, until the, to the end of the loop of your dummy clip. So that's really important to bear in mind. Any clip, which is 25 millimeters diameter or more, which is most of them, must have ventilation holes in. That's really important. So um, we do have some metal clips with no vent holes. These are compliant because they're under 25 mils. But yes, so we've got these ones, we've got uh, silicone ones. So these are all safety certified. So you get your cord, which you've measured. So I'm not telling you how to make everything. So this is what I do. You get your silk cord, you get your lighter and you just gently heat those ends up. What you're looking for is these bubbles that form on the end and you want them to be two or three mils, these bubbles, and they need to be lovely and hot. Then you hold them together like that. And make a big blob. Now it's important to say that the ends must meet rather than overlap. If they overlap you get a compromise and then when it's cooled down a little bit and you'll get to know this over time and a few burnt fingers you can kind of roll that. Now this I'm going to show you will not break open if you've done it right. However you don't want to rely on that for your safety. So now you've got your cord in, that's made a loop and you push, push that through the base of the clip like this. So then to string the beads on, you think, well, how on earth am I going to do this? You get either some ribbon or some, I've got some just some one mil cord here. If I string that on there. I pop it on my very handy blunt end needle and make a knot, clip the knot, then get my beads. So I put the first bead on. And then what I do is I make a knot above the join. So above the join. Now silicone beads are so lovely and stretchy that you can pull your bead over your knot with a bit of force. 
which is also the reason why we need a rigid bead at the end because silicone beads are so flexible they can slip over almost any knot so even if you do a triple knot with enough force it'll come off which is why we end in a rigid bead so that none of these beads can come off when it's on a little baby so now what I'm doing is I'm putting in another knot there can you see so I've got knots on either side of my join which may be overkill but it's much better to be safe and then you just continue doing this pulling your beads on in whatever design you've got just make sure your beads are properly tested make sure there's nothing kind of hanging off them nothing can hang off them there's nothing jingling if it jingles it's got a bell on it's classed as having play value and because they are dummy clips they are not toys they can't they can't have play value I also while I'm here stringing my beads they also mustn't have a teether attached or anything other than a dummy attached to the end so I have my string of beads I'm then going to take one of our lovely wood beads so beech wood obviously makes a really good end bead um, because it's rigid and it looks nice too especially if you've got a wood clip so there then what I do is make your loop at the end like so so now you have a nice knot a rigid bead then you take this and just slip it up and you have here one dummy clip which is joined with two knots either side. If anything should happen to that join, your clip's still not gonna come undone. So then you, what you need to do then is measure from this point to the end of your loop. And this has to be pulled taut. So as stretched out as you can make it, that must be under 22 centimeters, otherwise, your clip will fail before it's even really got through the blocks of the test house, uh, which is a shame because dummy testing is expensive. Um, so um, it's also worth mentioning, don't add your info clip to the end of here, as I found out the hard way, because that is still classed as lengthening the clip. So um, dummy clips are subject to um, their own set of wording, which you can find on the safety regs um, and it's also important to say it mustn't have a CE mark on it. Toys must, dummy clips mustn't. So I hope that video is helpful.